that can happen. But but to to go back and win them both and to beat you know to beat the likes of a Tom Brady and a Bill Belichick, then, yeah, you're Whoa. you're great. you're great at that point. So something. To be yeah, yeah. Fun. You'll always be remembered as the Brady stopper. As yeah, the you uh, so Tom you stop. Coffey. This is the dynasty of this era. Is the New England Patriots, and there's really no there's really no two ways about it. And mm-hmm. you're the you're the team. You were that team that they couldn't beat. Yeah, yeah, they were the Achilles heel for sure. You were um, the Aaron so- Pryor to their Alexis Arguello. <laughs> Good box it. Um, so Buffalo always needs a head coach. The likes of Doug Malone and Chan Gailey and all these names have come through come through uh, Orchard Park. Who do the Buffalo Bills hire? It's not Rex. It's not Rob. Those two guys can't coach. Nope. Nope. Yeah, Re- Robin, Robin Rex are um, they're going to be licking their wounds for a bit. Um, I don't think anybody's. Must maybe a, I can see Rex Rex not Rob getting getting a, a D, DC job somewhere. I can see I, that. I can too. I think Rex ends up on TV. Somebody's going to try to parlay his personality on television. He'll be. Uh, you know that that's a good point. That's not a bad idea though. I think yeah, he'd be somebody. So. Would, you probably would listen to Rex Ryan. I mean, on TV. Not as not in your head, not as a head coach. You probably wouldn't want him as your head coach, but to hear him on TV probably wouldn't be so bad. Nah, probably um, not. Probably not. So, um, Buffalo, who, who, who? Jim Bob Cooter, uh, is that his name even going to come up? Josh McDaniels is another one. I don't think Josh is going anywhere. I think Josh. Josh, is, Josh is not going to Buffalo of all places. I can tell no, you that. He's not. He's going to sit with the hoodie till the seat grows cold, and then Josh will take that seat. I don't know that he wants that a job anywhere else. He's young still. That's the thing about Josh McDaniels. There's no rush for him. He's got. A, he's in a great situation, working with the greatest quarterback of all time in a lot of ways. In a great system. Um, yeah. There's just. There's really no. No. There's, there's no room to rush no anything. For him to proceed. Uh, none at nope. all. But you know, especially around, his age. Yeah, he's a young man. But looking around the other. Okay, so Anthony Lynn is taking over as the as, uh, Buffalo's interim head coach. Oh, who was oh God? You know, uh, that Dan Campbell took over interim in Miami for a little while. Tony Sperano took up interim in Oakland before Del Rio got there. Um, uh, there was somebody else who took over for the Jets for a little while. Oh, no, when they fired. No, because I think Rex finished the season. Yeah, Rex finished the year. They fired him after the season. Yeah, I can't recall, but because there's, there's just so many. Um, Perry Fuel, Fuel was one of the guys. He might have even been in in in, God, was he in Buffalo. I don't know where he where Perry Fuel was. Uh, Perry Fuel was in Buffalo. He was, wasn't he? Yeah, sure was. Okay, so Wade again, Phillips has done it before. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and I guess what what we actually have to do is you take a step back and you look at the coaching tree because guys like Joe Philbin flamed out in Miami. Flamed out. Um, yeah. Adam Gase is doing a great job in Miami. Adam Gase has a lot more talent than Joe Philbin had, but Adam Gase is drafted a lot better. Adam Gase drafts offensive linemen. Uh, he brings in guys like Tunsil. He's Do you think a guy like Wade Phillips, Phillips can get another shot at things? No. I think the NFL think? has established, and they've placed Wade Phillips in the North Turner category, which is you He's are a, a coordinator. great coordinator. Stay there. And that's that's to me that's what Wade Phillips is. Wade Phillips is a great defensive coordinator, not a head coach. Norv Turner, great defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator, not a head coach. Um, I hope that Norv Turner's name doesn't come up in Los Angeles. I think that maybe just maybe Kyle Shanahan's name may come up. Yeah, well, if you're not if you're going to hire Kyle Shanahan, in at that, that respect, it's like, you know, what's what's your what's your gripe about Norv Turner? What do you mean? I mean, I I don't get. I mean, if you're gonna go, if you're going to head up, you think Kyle Shanahan's a better? I mean, I haven't really. Where's he? Is he still the OC in Washington? Um, I believe so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about seeing where he's going to make. Uh, you know, he's going to make much of a difference either. I don't. Really, you know, I don't. I don't really where, see spl- guy, such a great offense somebody. juggernaut in Washington. You, you no, know, but you you got to hire somebody, and, and I don't know. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I mean, actually, he is in uh, Atlanta. Excuse me. Kyle Shanahan is Atlanta's offensive coordinator. That offensive, that offense is a juggernaut. Yes, it is. Okay, that's a great offense. However, 
That offense has all kinds of things. And now we've got to wrap it up here. We've got about eight minutes left. Um, but let me say this as far as the NFL goes. The NFL is every every mouth of the South, every talking head out there has always said the NFL is a, it's a copycat league. The NFL is a copycat league. One team copies another. One team looks at another team and copies them and copies them. And that's what happened with the Wildcat offense. And it's copycat bullshit. They don't do it enough. Why has nobody copied Bill Belichick's system? Hmm. It's a good question, maybe, right? Maybe Belichick has a very simple Belich- system. He's been, well, Belichick he's been seems Charlie to copy. Weiss, Charlie White, led- Romeo Cornell, Josh Daniels on his second turnaround. Um, Bill O'Brien was the OC there. He said all these different coordinators. Matt Patricia is now the defensive coordinator. He said all these coordinators, but everything is still the same result. He runs things a specific way. Offensive plays are called a specific way. Meticulous. It's, it's, it's a meticulous the, game planning system that, you know, not everybody can do. It's, it's just to the talent is what they do. And, it, you know, Al Davis used to say it's not about plays. It's about players. And you use them to their ability. And I think that that's one of the things that the, the New England Patriots do so exceptionally well is they take guys who are able to do this and they have them go do this as opposed to other teams taking guys that are able to do this, and they make them go do that. Um, years ago with the Oakland Raiders, they drafted a kid out of Washington by the name of Tyler Bright. He was like six foot seven, monster defensive end. You put him on defensive end, and he was really good off the edge, uh, very good against a right tackle, good against the run. So what did the Raiders and Rob Ryan, by the way, I believe was his defensive coordinator, you know what they did with Tyler Brayton? They turned him into an outside linebacker. He was too big, he was too slow, he couldn't cover anybody, and he got ran past and was taken out of the play with great consistency. His career fizzled out. That is it's poor coaching, it's poor utilization of the talent, but you watch Belichick, and people always say, and I've been thinking about this for a while, um, they, they bring people into New England, and people go, well, who's this guy? He was in Miami, and he was shit. He was in Atlanta, and he didn't do anything. He was here and didn't do this. Well, Belichick brings him in and goes, well, let's evaluate what this guy is very good at, and we'll ask him to do a lot of that, a la Chris Hogan, a la Julian Edelman. The story about Edelman is you know, out of Kent State is, um, we don't know what position you're going to play, but we know you're a football player. These are utilizing if you, the if, if Julian Edelman would have gone any, I agree, Julian Edelman would have gone anywhere else, he would have been a uh, – a, maybe a three wide receiver at best, probably have been out of the league by now. He would be lucky to have been a Cole Beasley if he was anywhere else. Lucky to be a Cole Beasley. Now, to, to the copycat point that I'm bringing up here, um, the idea is model success. In business, you find a business model, and you see when you go, wow, that one works. I'm going to put my concept on it, but use that model and win with it, and I'm going to be successful too because that's how you're supposed to do things. The Dallas Cowboys have reverted to a model they've used in the past as well, which is quarterback, running back, wide receiver. The one thing they had in the late 90s with those Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith teams was a great offensive line, some of the best offensive linemen you'll ever see in your life. You build your found. That's how you build a team. You start with the foundation. It's how you build a house. The foundation is the offensive line. Start up the middle and everything, everything up the middle. And you build the base and you build the foundation, like you said. So, you know, now is a copycat, and we're talking about teams like Buffalo, Jacksonville, the Rams, the Jets, unfortunately, the Browns, the Chargers. I, I hear, let's, let's, I don't want to pick on the Browns anymore because that's tired. Um, but I hear conversation out of Northeast Ohio, and people say, well, well, you know, let's draft Dalvin Cook. Let's go draft uh, Golston. What's his name, Deshaun Golston? Yeah, Deshaun Golston. That's the kid from Clemson, right? Mm, wait a minute, wait a minute. Deshaun, Deshaun Golston, I believe, I believe plays in the NFL. No, no, no. Already. What's the name of the kid at Clemson? Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, thank you. Um, when no. you hear people out of the Northeast going, you know, well, let's take Deshaun Watson, let's uh, draft Alvin Cook, um, Leonard Fournette, do all these things, those are all good players. It's not that they're not, but that's not what that team needs right now. That team needs to draft four offensive linemen, and they better hope to hit. On two thirds, that on, on three quarters I, of it. I will say I don't think they draft a quarterback at all. I, I think you, you. I think you owe it. You owe it. Not 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 yet. Not yet. Not this upcoming. You don't waste you your don't. first round pick. Get the kid killed. Yeah, you exactly. Can go, they'll gladly sit back there and get killed into their life. I think I think you owe Cody Kessler that opportunity to show he can be something. You do I don't think owe it's, it. I mean, it's look. It's I professional don't. sports. You don't owe anybody shit. But I agree with you. I really agree with you. 
If you owe him that because he got killed, he took a be- took a beating this year. You owe at least because this team's going to take three years to be anything. It's not going to that's not going to happen next year. Probably won't even happen the year after that. It's going to take a good solid three years, maybe even four, to build this team. It's uh, they're yeah, really no, they're going to give up on Hugh Jackson long before then too. So then that team will be uh, again waiting in line on the carousel to find a new coach to hop in there too, and and, and that sucks. It sucks. Um, you're going to have a head coach. You're going to have um, you're going to have Hugh Jackson go in there. I mean, it kind of does feel this way that the, the plan is to have him go in there. They're going to build it. He's going to be through all the stretch. And as soon as they're about to get good, they'll have a head. You know, they'll have a head coach for that upcoming season. That team will be good, and he'll get all the credit for it. Just seems to have sure, that well, feel to it. Two things is we got a couple minutes left. We have like literally two and a half minutes left. Um, San Francisco does Chip Kelly get fired? Rapid fire! Rapid fire! Yes, he should. Yeah, he should. He should. They should shit can him right now. Um, does Eric Mangini? I'm going to look into my crystal balls right here, buddy. Eric Mangini takes that head coaching job in San Francisco. Anything's better than Chip right now. So if he, if that's if that's your best available to put it to put the man uh, man genius in there, go for it. If it means no Chip Kelly, that's what you got to do. Chip Kelly, he's overstayed his welcome in the NFL. He's not an NFL head coach. He needs to go back Ooh. to college, learn some things, and then if he wants to come back, maybe later on. But he's not ready for the NFL yet. He sucks. Um, what what went wrong with Eric Mangini in Cleveland? And now he once he was uh, dispatched from the Browns, he hasn't sniffed a head coaching gig. But I think he won like his last three games in Cleveland, last four. Games. Terrible organization. They make terrible decisions. That's why they're in the boat they're in. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering. To be uh, very blunt, I mean, you know, it is. But it, I'm just wondering when somebody is going to hop back on the Eric Mangini wagon. So he he could get another shot somewhere. It just it doesn't help that the San Francisco 49ers weren't good at anything this year. No, it doesn't help that he, he is their defensive coordinator got run over. They don't have any talent. And keep in mind too. Let me point something out about that 49ers defense in defense of Mr. Eric Mangini here, um, Patrick Willis, uh, Navarro Bowman, um, Chris Borland, um, Alden Smith. These are all guys they spent early money on, early draft picks on, and they just all walked away in some way, shape, or form. So all of the Patrick Willis was a Hall of Famer if he stuck around another four years. Yeah, just you never know what's going on with somebody's body in their head. Like, look, dude, I can't take I this think anymore. You, I think he made a great decision. If that's the decision he wanted to make for his future and his his life, I think that's a great decision. I read an article about Calvin Johnson. We talked about him earlier. He says he doesn't miss he doesn't miss playing football one day. He says what he enjoys the most about it is waking up Monday morning and being able to get out of bed. Yeah, that speaks volumes. It really does. Uh, yep. That's how, that's how important this health should be to these guys, and I'll never criticize anybody for, for walking away from a game. You know what? It, it's not about money. It is about how long you're able to spend on this earth, and if you can't spend it with any quality time or any value to your life and you're in a situation like, you know, uh, uh, sadly like a Steve Gleason who's a prisoner in his own body as a result of, of head trauma in football. And, and you've got guys that with CTE and all these things. I get it. Walk away, man. If you feel like this isn't right for you, get the hell out. Go do something else. I, and I, Peter, I we all saw Patrick Willis, man. That guy was a high collision player. Oh, he's fun to watch, man. He was real fun to watch. Great player. Um, without question, going to, uh, to be in Canton had he stuck around. And it was an easy probably decision for him. A guy who I, I read up a lot. I saw a lot of um, – a thing about him and read up on him. I mean, it's an interesting story. Grew up um, in, just to say, you know, almost third world poverty. The man grew up in and, you know, wasn't very edgy, you know, wasn't, had, didn't have access to good education in the schools and came up, came up that way. And uh, football was his ticket. He made his money, he probably took care of his family forever and said, I'm going to save my body and enjoy this moment with my family. Good for him. Yeah, I think that that's a good thing. I think old Willis 52 made the right move, man. So uh, on that note, homie, we're, um, we're up against the clock. We have emptied the tank, which we really have, and I could go on for another hour tonight, but we just don't have it in us. Um, yeah, just shooting the shit, man, having some fun. I always enjoy these little conversations. It's good for us uh, to grease the wheel and to find out. So, it's, uh, it's a very interesting season. I'm very anxious to see how it plays out. I am, too. I'm looking forward to a lot of conversation, a lot of talk during playoff time because there's a lot going on to be excited about, just like during the baseball playoffs, football playoffs is going to ramp up as well. Quick congratulations to a few of our listeners out there who were telling us about battling it out in their fantasy championships. Um, I had a handful of folks that turned out to be big winners. I'm very proud of you guys, and, and uh, 
Uh, for those that thanked us for their help uh, throughout the fantasy season, you're more than welcome. We thank you guys so much.